day 69. We are still at the KOA. Um, it's actually, it's not that late. It's maybe like eight o'clock. Um, we both set up our tents last night just to have a little extra space to put gear in, to stop and to just kind of have a little privacy buffer. Um, everything is soaked. We're on the Yampa and uh, on grass, so everything's wet, which sucks. Oh my gosh, something bit me in the ankle last night that left like an almost ankle size welt with like a blister on it last night, and it is so itchy. So I had a Benadryl evening last night and may need to have a Claritin today. The cottonwood is going crazy and I used to be allergic or I thought I was allergic to cottonwood when I lived in New Mexico last time. That was the first time I ever had allergies. But um, I mean, cottonwood's like flying around here and just like dropping like snow. And so far, knock on wood, I haven't had to take a Claritin yet. Anyway, we have to do a bunch of stuff in town this morning before we take off and Steamboat's like super busy this weekend with this art show and I guess there was a balloon fiesta this morning. I haven't seen any balloons, but I think they took off at like six o'clock, which is like apparently the standard time for balloon liftoff because I think that's when they took off for the Albuquerque balloon fiesta as well. That's when they take off. Anyway, we have a shitload of errands to do in town, which is all gonna um, need to be done by bus because the campground is kind of far out of town away from everything, but this is our last chance to do laundry until Rollins, which is in like 160 plus miles. And uh, Encampment, which is the next sort of town stop, doesn't really have much of anything in terms of resupply. So we need to mail ourselves boxes or figure out how to have boxes sent to us with stuff to get us from Encampment to Rollins. It's like 82 or so miles. Anyway, and let everything dry out here. But, um, you know, at least everything's like getting to get everything charged up. They have a charging station at the KOA and um, so that's handy and they have a sink so that I could wash all the, my pot and then my coffee filter out because I keep putting my coffee uh, filter back into my food bag and then the old grounds dry up and fall to the bottom of the bag. So my food bag's a mess right now. Anyway, we're just kind of letting things dry out and packing up slowly. Um, somebody from... I guess uh, Instagram or YouTube or something as cousin has popped up in a car trailer a couple uh, spots down in the overflow and like recognized Nightcrawler or us or something and left him a little gift last night and I think maybe the same people left us a tube of noon this morning which is awesome thank you so much because I don't think either of us has any electrolytes right now and uh, noons are expensive so and they're really good but yeah don't don't eat them i tried that once it worked out bad so just the more you know anyway packing up getting out doing town stuff and then hopefully getting back to trail by this afternoon sometime you know we'll see what happens so we are still at the koa because this place is just so great we can't bring ourselves to depart <laughs> Actually, no, we've been hanging out here and we we got caught up with Chris who found us last night randomly. His cousin is like visiting the KOA from uh, Wyoming, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah, they're taking a good road trip and they happen to be stopped by here. So he hooked us up with some fuel, which is awesome because I'm almost out. And uh, I think Crawler was too. And also breakfast beers, which is that's definitely my jam. You know how I roll. So, oh my gosh, Chris, it's great to meet you. Thanks for coming out and oh my god, what a surprise! Did you leave yeah. the noons too? What's that? The tablets, the electrolyte tablets? No. Nope, oh do my those. gosh, somebody surprised us with Fuck some electrolyte nice. tablets too. But <laughs> left a uh, nightcrawler a nice little safety supply and um, came with some breakfast beers, which is totally my jam, <laughs> and some fuel and a lot of good knowledge about what to do in Steamboat because this place is money and like. We ain't about that. So thank you so much no for problem. everything. It's a quarter to noon and we are finally departing the campgrounds of America in Steamboat Springs. I wanted to say goodbye to Tim and Lynn and get a picture with them, but ah, they're not here. They did keep their bikes covered though in case of bad weather. They must have taken the free bus in the town. So it's almost three and Chris and Kendra have been hanging out with us and like hooking us up by running us around all 
morning and afternoon long. Oh my gosh, like they're really God, like just saviors of today because who knows how long it would have taken to hitch out a steamboat. It's Saturday and everybody's going into steamboat. They also picked up Quetzal and Carlos on the way out of town who I finally got to meet. I've been wanting to meet Quetzal since uh, she first hit me up on Facebook in like 2015, 2016. So we're finally back out on trail. Our bags are stupid heavy because like we don't get to sip and saunter anymore. We have to carry for like 80 plus miles. Everything's all awkward and out of place. But you know, the main goal of today is to get back to the trail. It's like two miles walk up US 40 to the dirt road turn off. And then, uh, you know, we're back off the highway again. So yeah, yes. We're back on trail. Yay! Walking up US Highway 40 back towards Steamboat Springs. But only for a couple of miles. Like, this junction's like 25 miles away from town. But, you know, this is a National Scenic Trail. There's a ton of road walking. I feel like they have signs up to watch out for cows. People are still hauling out, so I still feel like the cow gets, gets hit and dies. But they should have hiker signs too. Like, what about watch out for the hikers? <laughs> watch out for the smelly homeless looking people that may or may not be walking this road during a season. I don't know. Just cows. <sighs> well, it is the cow dung trail. Anyway, like two miles on this trail. And it turns out that Drunk Frogger is actually Rabbit Ear Peak. Huh. Apparently a big chunk out of one of his ears fell. But I'm still not really clear how you turn that into a rabbit and not a drunk frog but that's just me i don't get to name things and this is probably why all right we're done with highway 40 which is nice we had to frog rid ourselves a couple of times to get onto a safe spot for a better shoulder all right forest service road 308 on the route or route national forest be on this for a little bit, I guess. I don't know. I actually haven't looked any further than this. I should probably do that. And we're at the Rabbit Ears Trailhead. You can see it a little bit through the rocks. There's Drunk Frogger. Or as a, you could call, we decided it could be called Toasted Toad. He'd probably like that. He had an experience here at Rabbit Ears Pass. Oh, no, it's just Toasted Toad Pass. They should let me name stuff. They should, like, we should just get to name stuff by committee. The coolest name wins. T toasted Toad Pass is way better than uh, Rabbit Ears Pass, especially considering the way it looks now. Maybe back when they named it, it looked more like rabbits, but right now, not so much. Well, we've seen more than our share of cows grazing all over this trail. Now it looks like we might see some sheep. And they say, watch out for the dogs. But look at his little face. He's like, I won't hurt you. It's okay. But this one's like, go fuck yourself. So, you know, I'm going to take the... <laughs> I'm going to go with him. <laughs> we'll leave the sheep alone. Apparently, uh, the dogs can get a little angry. Yeah, trails around here somewhere. I see three different possibilities. <sighs> I guess we should look at the map and I don't see any blazes. We're on Dumont Lake Campground. My I think it's that's busy. Wow. Not full though. I think this is a fee area, but I'm betting for just a regular ten site. It's a hell of a lot cheaper than the KOA. And not all packed in like sardines. I'm not sure, I think the lake is over there. And this place is hopping. So now that we're back on trail, there's wildflowers everywhere, of course. And I left my wildflower book with Chris and Kendra because I'm carrying so much food, I didn't want to carry the book anymore. And I'm carrying 
like a bunch of mats. So, you know, in case the snow gets crazy because we don't really know what we're getting into. There's not really a lot of intel on the trail in between here and encampment. So, and the trail gets high. So I'm still carrying the bike map. I'm carrying the national forest map and uh, all that stuff. But, so I gave up the book and asked him to send it. They're, they're sending us a bounce or a, a resupply box of stuff to uh, encampment because by the time we were done shopping, the post office was closed. So I left in the book. I hope they enjoy it, but man, now I wish I had it because I don't know some of the stuff I'm seeing. I think I remember, but I didn't go through the whole book. And frankly, the yellow section alone was like a good third of the book. Maybe that's Lake Dumont or Dumont Lake. Yeah, we get to take a little bit of a trail to go from one section of the campground to the other. Haven't seen the entrance yet. I'm not sure where it is. But anyway, yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's Rosy Paintbrush. I know that's in the Carrot family, but I can't remember what it's called. But whatever, I'm learning, I'm learning. I'll get the book in encampment, take a bunch of pictures, try to identify what I saw when I get there. Because uh, once we get to an encampment, I'll probably bounce that book on out since, you know, party's over, sip and saunter's over. We gotta do big food carries again and maybe big water carries, probably big water carries to the basin. I'm gonna have to get an umbrella. <sighs> it's probably a little more important than a Wildflowers of Colorado book, but bummer. Cause I would sure like to know what, like, what are you? I haven't seen you before. Damn it. It's going to be so hard, I think, for a while to find, look at the mosquitoes, find a place to camp with no mosquitoes. Oh my God. I feel like the Zika and dengue are everywhere. A little malaria fair walk. Want to be nice. Are we supposed to get up there? Shit, I forget. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Oh my gosh, we're gonna be on our around water. I can't imagine, like, maybe that's why this campground's not full. I sure wouldn't choose to camp out at any body of standing water right now. And the mosquitoes are insane. It's pretty lake, but I'd prefer to visit this if I was into lakes, like late August, early September even. But oh my god, not now. Luckily there's a tiny bit of breeze keeping them down, but holy crap. As soon as it calms down, they start swarming like crazy. Definitely gonna have to order some more of the Puritan to come to us in Wyoming. Cause we're gonna run out. They've got all this green erosion control carpeting out, which generally is ineffective, but kind of gives me the feeling like I'm walking on an abandoned putt-putt course. You know, erosion happens. There's a fucking marsh. There's Dumont Lake. Dengue Lake. Right now. Oh, everywhere is wet. Oh, there's even some snow over there still. So as soon as we rounded that bend up there, the breeze stopped and then we got to this, it's called a canal, probably because at one point it was a canal. Now it's not, it's just a little stream, a little crossing, avoid, hopefully avoid getting wet. It looked a little muddy over there, but oh my God, it's mosquito central. So even though it's only like a little bit after six, we could like climb up to the top of this right after. So thinking, hoping, it's a little breezier up there, a little bit drier uh, to maybe set up and just get another early start tomorrow because man, it's going to be hard to like avoid mosquitoes for a while, but we might as well do what we can, where we can, when we can. Well, we got water from that canal and tried to find a campsite as high and dry as we possibly could. Beautiful view, 
we will be enjoying from within the safety of the tent as soon as we can possibly get in there. We're filtering water right now. But, oh my god, the mosquitoes are just like, they're horrible up here. They're going to be horrible everywhere for a while now. It's just going to be a fact of life. Just, oh my god, Mozzie, stay off my face and stay out of my gas and jewels. That's really all I care about. Can't be putting bug lotion all over those bits. I put it on my face, but I don't like it. It's horrible. Oh well. Lake, this lake is really pretty. Still wouldn't want to camp down there. It's probably even worse down there, but holy moly. We gotta get inside. So we're in the tent. I mean, the view of the lake, beautiful, but the mosquitoes, oh my gosh. And there's definitely way more on that side than there are on this side. We think it's probably because they're coming out of the woods. And also there is, when there is a little breeze that comes from this side or it seems to hit this side more. So but look at that on the inside of the tent. Oh my God, they're just like little bloodthirsty bitches waiting and I have to pee. I don't want to. Oh my God. Wow, but it is beautiful here. Oh my gosh, it just feels so good to be back out in the woods. The steamboat's like reasonably cool town and all, but you know, I don't know. It's just, it feels better being out here. It feels like being home again, even though our home moves every day. And it's very small and a little claustrophobic when we're stuck in it like this. I'd still rather be here than parked in the dog shit lot at the KOE. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's raining now. So we're even more stuck in the tent than just with the mosquitoes. At least with the mosquitoes, we can leave the fly open, but mm, that's okay though. It's good that we're inside. We're gonna have dinner. We didn't get many miles in today, but we got enough. We're out, we're away from pretty much everybody. We got up off the lake. Tried to get to as dry a spot as possible, but there's really just no real dry spots out here. So it's just going to be life for the next few days, probably while we're up in the high mountains. You know, we had a little bit of snow today, a little bit of mud. Luckily, I don't think either of us got our shoes super muddy before we, you know, stopped for the day. So that's good and unusual. Usually something catastrophic happens in terms of moisture, if there is any, right before we try to camp. But no, we got good luck today. So dinner, bed, because we're getting up early to get out of here. Unless it's still raining. If it's still raining, then fuck all that. Good night.